Uh, 40 minutes into the trading session, you have a, your headline of the day, please. Uh, it's the Wall Street Journal today on Jeff Kindler, CEO of Pfizer, former CEO, I should say. He stepped down, and they dig a little bit deeper to find out what really went wrong there. And I, I think the spin is very interesting on this one, Stuart. He talks about being very stressed and very burnt out. And to that, I would say, wow. Destroying the American health care system really does get to a guy after a while, doesn't it? <laughs> whoa, a lot of people whoa, whoa, are saying, whoa, whoa. why did he leave, right? Why would a CEO leave so abruptly? Look what they lost. Not only did they lose some credibility, and now everyone's engaging in a speculation game, they lost a seat on the pharma board. That's a very influential position. Kindler was on that position. He was first to the table during the health care talks. He cut a deal very, very early. And people are wondering, okay, what is it? Is it because of declining Pfizer stocks? Is it because the board said to him earlier, wait a minute, we, we want a little better compliance on your end. I think this guy, as I've said before on this show, was so fearful that ISA was going to subpoena him and ask him about what he promised the administration in return for the deal he cut on Obamacare. Oh, very well, interesting. That's Actually, now this leads perfectly into our next guest. Uh, joining the company right now is Peter Faraday. He's the president of the conservative watchdog group, the National Legal and Policy Center. Peter, I presume you heard what our own Andre Tantaros just said, that there's an element of politics in, in Mr. Kindler's abrupt resignation. You would agree with that, I take it. And could you uh, give us a little more detail? Stuart, there's a report in the Wall Street Journal this morning that uh, Jeffrey Kindler was abusive to his subordinates, and that got back to some board members. Kindler himself says he was just simply exhausted by the demands of the job. But I do think that there is a political dimension to this. With him gone, it's better for Pfizer. Uh, Kindler was the ringleader of the big farmer uh, CEOs in favor of Obamacare. Now uh, Pfizer and the other big pharma companies have to deal with the Republicans on the Hill. And having Kindler there uh, would not be an asset for the company. Do you think it's the f he is the first of perhaps others leading big pharmaceutical companies who've also been involved in a deal with the Obama administration and the forthcoming Obamacare. Do you think Kinder is the first to go and others will follow? No, he's the second. Uh -huh. uh, just recently, Richard Clark, the CEO of uh, Merck, departed. Uh, it'd be interesting to see what happens at uh, Pharma itself, the trade group. Kindler was the chairman of that organization. He resigned that post as well. The new chairman is Chris Weibacher, who's the CEO of Sanofi Aventis. I think that uh, Weibacher struck exactly the wrong note this morning when he uh, thanked uh, Kindler and pointed to Kindler's role in the passage of Obamacare. Peter, uh, um, Andrea Tantaros raised the issue that Daryl Issa, who is going to be the head of a committee in the new Republican House, may well have subpoenaed Mr. Kindler and asked him what deal did he in fact cut with the Obama administration and the threat of an, Ob of an ISA subpoena to Mr. Kindler was enough to force him out. You agree with that? Well, I have no first-hand information of that, but whether uh, Kindler is still CEO or not, I think he should be subpoenaed. Let's remember what happened here. The big pharmaceutical companies cut a deal with the Obama administration. They ran $100 million in ads in favor of Obamacare in return for uh, a guarantee of customers under the new plan and insulation from certain kinds of competition. This is backroom uh, dealing at its worst. Uh, I think that uh, the CEOs of these big companies must heed the election results just as much as members of Congress uh, have had to, but it's not clear to me that they are. We actually are uh, Pfizer shareholders. We last month filed a resolution for consideration by Pfizer shareholders on the company's lobbying priorities, hmm. and we were uh, more prescient than we knew because we rhetorically suggested that Kindler would retire uh -huh. before the government made Pfizer sell its products for less than the cost of production. Uh, we believe that under Obamacare, price controls, well, he's controls are inevitable for he's big gone. pharma, so it's shareholders who will lose. Peter, Peter Flaherty, thanks for joining us. So we appreciate your input on this. Let me go back to Andre for a second. Peter Flaherty said he got no first-hand information of uh, an ISA subpoena on Kindler. Do you? 
Well, I, I don't have anything confirmed, but you got to look at this. Kindler was the most, arguably, the most important outside figure that has to do with health care reform. He was the first to the table before the medical device makers and the others. And think about this, Stuart. If they would have formed a coalition like they did in 1994, if businesses would have come together and said, we're not going to cave, they could have stopped this thing. But because Kindler, Kindler raced in mm. and cut the deal early and had 527s, this is why pharma has, has a real bullseye on it. It had 527s cutting ads in favor of this. That's why they're going to ask, what deal did you cut in exchange for political favors? Watch it. Watch I say. Yeah, I'm watching.